I think we're up and running. Welcome back to another video around mass transit, live coding. Um, a lot of episodes out there. I've been looking at what people have been watching and, you know, quite a few viewers, quite a few people going through and watching, you know, at least the first 10, 15 minutes of each video. You know, it's kind of what to be expected, but uh, so far so good. You know, I'm pretty happy with the progress. I think the content's been good. A lot of good feedback, a lot of good questions. So I appreciate those, you know, hitting me up offline. Um, within the links of each video on YouTube, we've got links to the website, the Discord, you know, all the different chat rooms, documentation, links to all the videos. So definitely check it out. It's, uh, it's been a lot of fun so far, and I want to kind of get into something that, you know, I think I glossed over in a couple episodes, but we didn't really talk too much about is error handling. How does, how does mass transit handle errors? What does it do in the case of a consumer throwing an exception? or anything like that. So I kind of wanted to dig into that and I thought we'd do that again. We have the existing solution, which I did put on GitHub. So if you go to github.com slash mass transit, one of the repositories is called sample-twitch and it is all the code that we've put together so far for this sample. Um, and then have we gone through all the videos. So feel free to check out that repo. It has all the code in it. You can see where it's evolved through the different episodes and kind of have it for a reference because I know that was definitely a need that was uh, out there. Um, without anything further, I'll jump into the code. I will crank up the font size one more. That's the one thing I forgot to do before I got started tonight. So hopefully it'll come through a little better for people that are on 1080p but not quite at 100%. So sometimes the bandwidth is a little crazy right now. So. So faults, um, when a consumer throws an exception, mass transit does a number of different things. And I think what we'll do is we'll take the fulfill order consumer that we have and put some exceptions in there to make it fail. Because that way we can look at what actually happens when a consumer fails. So you can see the fulfill order consumer. Right now, all it does is build the routing slip. The other consumer that we have that's similar is the submit order consumer. And the way we handle that right now is we actually check for a business condition and then return a different response rejecting the order if the customer number is test. So in that case, we didn't throw an exception and say like invalid argument. We actually said this explicit condition happened. We have an invalid customer number. I, I want to reject the order. I want to do that, and that's a business level concern. I want to handle that without going through exception handling to do the work. Um, but in the case of the fulfill order consumer, what, we, what I'm thinking we can do is we can we can check the check something in the order, maybe the payment card number, and actually throw an exception so that we can look at what happens when a consumer faults within the code. So what I'm thinking is we'll come in here and we'll just say if context.message and oh, we have customer number, we'll pick customer number. Um, and we'll just do starts with invalid. So this'll just let us um, cause an exception to happen. You know, in this case, it's because of an invalid um, you know, customer number. Uh, in this case, we're going to throw something. Um, we'll just do like an unexpected. Is there any unexpected? We'll just say it's something weird. Invalid operation exception sounds like a fun one. Um, we tried, but the customer is invalid. So let's say that the order was accepted, but for some reason or another, the customer number is now invalid. Whatever. It doesn't matter. We're just trying to show a fault happening. So that's the only change we're gonna to make to start with. Because that's in our service code, the only thing we have to restart is our service. So I'm gonna stop that and rebuild it. And now we know that a, an order with a customer number that starts with invalid is going to throw an exception. And we're gonna see that happen. We'll go to the website. I'm gonna cut this down to half size, just so we can kind of see. Um, narrows it up a bit and we can watch the right side as the service is running. Um, of course, I need to create a new order ID. Always going to have a new order ID. 
we will go back up to the post. We will punch in this order ID. We will change our customer to invalid123, and then our payment card will make it a valid card. Uh, and we will execute that. You can see the code in the right running, order submitted, everything was great. It's in the order state. Our order's been submitted. We will now go and patch that order, which, you know, as we know from the sample code, actually accepts that order so that we can then get it moving. We'll see this code run over here, and boom, right there, failed. We can see the order right away. And when we look really close at what happens here, we have the contract, we declare the exchange name, we bind the exchange fulfill order, and we send it. But you can see we have a mass transit fault. So we've declared some fault exchanges, we've declared the fault contract, and what's happened is Mass Transit has published a fault. So let's go see what that looks like. Because there's two things that have happened. So the consumer threw an exception, Mass Transit is going to catch that, and it's going to do a number of things. First, it's going to log the error, in which case we can see the system. We tried, but the customer number is invalid error. So that has shown up. We have this line number and everything else, typical exception log output. Um, but you can see that we created some exchanges. So let's go out here and look at the broker. And what we're here to see is the exchanges that were created. We can see that there was a fault of fulfill order created, and it had a message sent to it. The fault fulfill order binds to the mass transit fault exchange. So all faults implement or have two interface types. One is a generic type fault of T, where T is the message type. And the other type is fault, which is non-generic, which contains all the non-generic mem members of fault. So, you know, message type, um, and I'll show you the contract. Um, but so you can see that every other fault binds to this in RabbitMQ so that if a fault is published, it publishes to fault. And currently, we don't have anything bound to fault. So we aren't currently observing any faults. So those messages will be published, but they'll just be thrown away. Now, if we go to queues, we can see that there are two error queues here. Fulfill order, order state. So actually, there's three error queues. Awesome. But fulfill order error has one message in it, and it was just created. And if we go down and pull that, we can see that the message is the message that we tried to process with some additional headers on it. So what Mass Transit does is because that consumer doesn't have any retry handlers, nothing of that case on it, it's just going to say on the first exception from that consumer, I can't handle it. I'm going to move this message to the error queue, which it takes the queue name and adds underscore error. And it's just gonna move that message out of the queue so it doesn't block processing. If that message sat at the front of the queue, it would constantly be reprocessed and it would block other messages from being received. So we take that message, we move it out, and we put it into the error queue. And we can see that the message is the exact same JSON data that was already there, which I don't know if we've looked at a message yet, but you can see it has all of the properties. It has the, it has the conversation ID, which is consistent throughout all the messages in a, in a conversation. It has a unique message ID. The initiator, which is the message that created it. The source address for that message, which the state machine sent that fulfill order request. Where it was sent to, which in this case was the queue fulfill order. The message type that is implemented, sample contracts fulfill order. The actual message body itself, which we can see the invalid one, two, three, four there. The sent time, which was the time of the machine that sent the message. We can see the MT activity ID, which is the um, diagnostic activity ID for all the telemetry data so that stuff shows up in App Insights correctly, or whichever telemetry thing you're using to pull the data out of diagnostic source. And then the host information of the machine that actually created that. So that gives you that, you know, which machine, which instance, which service assembly. I've actually upgraded this to Mass Transit 6.2.4 when nobody was looking. That was released today, so I put this on the latest bits before I started the session just to make sure everything was still working. Um, yeah, so that's what happens when you move a message to the error. We also include a number of headers at the top. We keep the activity ID as a transport header. We have the consumer type, so we know which the consumer type failed. We know the exception type, the fault message the message type it was consuming at the time of the error, 
And then we also write the whole stack trace out because that might be useful. So we put that in the message broker as well. And it depends upon which transport you're using. RabbitMQ doesn't seem to really limit the amount of headers you have. So we write a lot of stuff there. Uh, I think Azure is very similar. If you use Service Bus Explorer and go out and look, you can see all the message properties. Um, Amazon SQS is really picky. You can't have more than like 10 headers. So we only put a subset of these out there uh, just because it doesn't like a whole lot of them and it has some pretty strict size limitations. Um, but yeah, this makes it very easy to go look in the error queue. You could write a, you could write some automation using like a shovel or a policy or rules within RabbitMQ at the broker level to do things like move the errors out of the error queue back into the processing queue if it was like some sort of system outage or you know anything you want you know it just depends you know the transports usually have a tool to move messages around so so that's what messages look like in the error queue we also published fault messages but we weren't consuming those but what's going to happen now is if i go and look at my state machine which if i go over here and i do a get status on that order oops i lost my Squid. Maybe it's this one. So if I get my status, you can see my status is accepted. But I know that the error failed because the fulfill order consumer faulted. It's it's dead. It's it basically the order is never going to go anywhere, and the customer sees well my order was accepted, but you never fulfilled it. At this point, we've created a huge customer dissatisfaction. So. So we have to do something better. We have to figure out a way to handle this fault in the consumer such that we're able to put some corrective logic in here or present this in a UI that you know someone can manually enter in or just retry it based on a given policy and say, oh, well, let's try to fill the order later. And of course, customer invalid probably isn't gonna fix itself. So you wanna differentiate transient errors from errors that are true business logic like customer did an invalid form of payment or anything like that. That's a non-recoverable error until the customer corrects the order, or, you know, however that would be resolved. Um, so yeah, so let's first start and look at what we, how we could handle the fault by looking at that state machine and see if we could figure out a way to make that better. So I'm gonna stop this service. I'm gonna go back to the editor. So the fulfill order consumer is called by the Saga state machine. And it's called with the accept order activity, which sends to the fulfill order. Now it sends this to that endpoint. And then the state machine, I believe, goes into the accepted state. So we have the accept order activity and we go into accept it. But we know that that fulfill order command can fault. So if we want to observe a fault in this state machine, we can add a new event type called public event fault of fulfill order. Fulfill order faulted. And we're going to have to tell that how to correlate it just like all the others. So where is fulfillment faulted? I wonder where that comes from. Um, so we're going to define that error, that message type, and we are going to say x dot correlate by ID in the message. In this case, because it's a fault, the message is actually the fault message. So you can see we have timestamp, fault ID, the actual message, exception info, which is a serializable version of exception data, which contains the same structure as like an aggregate exception. Uh, the host info, where it came from, uh, the faulted message types, basically all that stuff that comes off of there. Uh, we're also gonna have the message. So we're actually gonna do like two messages and go to the order ID. So a fault of T, in which case fault of fulfill order, includes the original message that faulted. So you have a full copy of the message that you can use you know, when you get the fault. Uh, I said I would show you the contract. So the contract of fault, you can see here, we have the fault ID, fault and message ID, the timestamp of when the fault was produced, the exception data, which the exception info includes exception type, exception info, inner exception, basically, almost the same structure as an exception in .NET, but because exception doesn't really like to go out over the wire that much, this is a cleaned up version of it. Um, 
And then with default of T, you can see we have the message. So that gives us that. Now that we have this event fulfill order faulted, we know that when we're in the accepted state, we could go into a faulted state if the fulfill order fails because it's never gonna run the routing slip. So when I look at like during any order submitted, so I'm trying to remember where this happens because we go into here, we transition to accepted. Oh, then during accepted, oh, so fulfillment faulted is our routing slip subscription, that's right. Um, but we have one more that we could handle in here now. So we could have any of those. We could also handle when fulfill order faulted, which this is when the consumer, so at this point the routing slip was never even created. We are going to transition to faulted as well so that we know that we faulted. And we'll even write out something useful here like um, Fulfill order faulted. And we could put something like context.data, context it's a routing slip, or it's a state machine. We could get the message, but we could also just take the exception info sub zero, hope it isn't null, and just write the message. Here we'll do the, we'll do this in a polite way. First or default <laughs> dot message. Okay, so we'll either write nothing or we'll write the first exceptions message. So let's save that. We know we're gonna transition to faulted. We will go out and run our service again. Hopefully we've correlated the message correctly. We'll go back to the website. Well, first we'll get a new order ID. We know that it's going to take an invalid one, two, three, four. That's fine. All that stuff should still work. We will execute that. If we go and get the order status, you can see that it's in submitted. So if we go down to patch and do our acceptance for the order, you can see that the order still failed. It declared the exchange name. We tried, but we also can see here that our Fulfill order faulted. We tried, but the customer is invalid. And we can see that that was within our Saga instance because our state machine Saga, we used an existing instance for that fault fulfill order event. So that event was published by the consumer. Our state machine received it. And now if we look at our order status, oops, what I get for selecting in terminal? we can see that it is in the faulted state because that consumer faulted. So the message still goes into the error queue. If we go out to RabbitMQ, we'll see another message in that error queue. So if we go to fulfill order, there's now two messages in there. And if we get both of those, we can see that one of them is the, let's see here, 058. So that was the first one. And then this was the one we just did at 110. So both of the messages are still in the error queue because even though we published the fault, we don't know that anybody's listening for it. And so we wanna make sure that message is around as a message so that we can resend it um, or move it back in using a shovel or whatever. You can see right here to move messages, use the shovel plugin by enabling RabbitMQ shovel. So it's built right in to be able to move messages back into the queue for processing if it's a recoverable error. But if it's unrecoverable, you'll need to use that data. But now that I've captured that fault and I've put that into my state machine, I could do different behaviors. I could, I could say, okay, well, I'm faulted, but I'm going to schedule a retry, you know, and I could use the scheduler to say, okay, I want to initiate a retry. So I'm wondering, let's see, is it worth doing that? We could do that. That sounds like fun. Nice little recovery strategy. We could schedule an event to retry the message. Um, yeah, we might be able to do that. Um, we would probably request the retry. Um, but that was, that was kind of the first thing I wanted to cover is how do faults work. Um, 
It is different than the fault with the routing slip. So this fulfillment faulted message that we found correlated. The order fulfillment faulted, if we look where that is, that's actually in the fulfill order consumer, but we're adding that as a subscription to the routing slip as a supplemental event for routing slip events not faulted. So normally the routing slip event faulted, it publishes a routing slip faulted event. We've added an additional event here that gets sent to the source address, which we know is our state machine, to say that if the routing slip itself faults, we're also going to go into that faulted state. So both of those will happen, both of those will trigger, and both of those will get us um, to where that state machine is in a faulted state. Um, I'm trying to think what else would be fairly easy to do. Um, because I don't want to go too far into it and go too far sideways and create a whole bunch of crazy weirdness that um, that we can't recover from because it's uh, it's a little strange. I'm going to look at my list. I have a I'm going to I'm going to jump to my notes here because I made notes of what I wanted to go through and I've completely blanked on what I was going to do besides that. Um, Sorry for that. Oh, I think I was gonna actually go in and, and say that if the routing slip faults, I was gonna try to schedule a retry now. No, oh, I was gonna put a retry on the consumer so that the consumer retries rather than failing immediately. So the fulfill order consumer currently, the only place, there are no other usages of it because we're just adding it to the container through the discovery. So if we go to the service setup and look, we can see that we're just saying add consumers from namespace. So we aren't doing anything special to configure that endpoint. But if we wanna configure that endpoint so that we have retry on the fulfill order consumer, just like the submit order consumer, we have to have a definition for it. So we'll create a definition file for that order, for that consumer. This is gonna be our fulfill order consumer. Fulfill order consumer definition. It's gonna get the same receive endpoint consumer configurator. We can put a message retry in there where we're gonna try it again every three times up to a thousand seconds. Um, but we're gonna extend this a little bit more because we know that we know that this is a non-recoverable error, so it will never succeed. So we want to ignore that error. So we will say ignore invalid operation exception because we know that that exception is never gonna be recoverable. So we wanna retry other things like writing to the broker or anything that might cause an issue, uh, but we don't wanna retry that exception. But we do want to be able to create an exception that we could retry. So we'll just put something in here like maybe. And what do we do? Is it like new random dot next? What do we put in here? Max value 100 greater than 50? I don't know. So like if random is greater than 50, we'll throw a different exception. And this one will be just an application exception we randomly exploded. So sad. Much tear. So now we are, if we have a customer number that starts with maybe, it's going to throw an application exception. And we will handle that one because we haven't excluded it from our list of exceptions that we'll handle. So we will actually retry up to three times for that particular exception. And that's configuring the definition. So since the way we're registering consumers, it's gonna match this definition to that consumer, which lets us override those things. We could also come in here and put things like concurrent message limit equals four. Say we only wanna process four at a time. Um, however we wanna do that, and it'll apply that at the transport appropriately, depending upon which transport you're using. So we'll add that definition. So that we have that retry, we'll save that out. 
We will go to our service. We will kill it and restart it. We will get our and get a new order ID. We will go back to here. We will create our order. This time we're going to put maybe at the start of the customer number. Hit that. You can see that it fired all that up, created our saga for us. We're now going to go and accept that order. And wouldn't you know it, it didn't get an error that time. Well, let's pick a different order number and see if we get errors this time. Assuming I did it right. Huh, I didn't get an error right at that time either. I wonder if I'm just that good and like my random numbers. I should go to Vegas with this kind of luck. That doesn't seem right. If I have a random, and that's the max value and it's greater than 50, let's make it more frequent. Let's say it's like greater than 30. See if we can increase our odds. If only we could do that at a slot machine in Vegas. That would be really cool. I'm sure there's an ocean something film that does it, so. Did I actually say it started with maybe? Yes, it starts with maybe. Okay. Try to get this one to explode. No explosions. Dang it. Must be doing something wrong. Or I'm just doing everything right. That's the sad part. Or does like maybe start with like the same random number every time because I'm newing up the random each time. But that's it. Probably something stupid like that. Um, let's see. Does next return an int? That's a good question. Um, Tools, interactive. See here, let's give me an interactive session. Rare random equals new random. Random dot next 100. There. Int result equals random dot next 100. This is probably not going to work. 84. Okay, so that's greater than 30. Fifty. Okay, so why why does it work for this? You see, it's clearly working. <laughs> I'm just getting really unlucky. <laughs> Let's try 10. I don't know. I don't know how to exit an interactive session, so. I'm used to using Mono's C Sharp console, so still use that. Um, but let's go ahead and kill the service again and start it up with our significantly increased odds. Because next returns an int, yeah. Get get a get a get a quid. We're only going to bounce back and forth on this, you know, a dozen more times until it works. So, hey, okay, I got a warning. Okay, it actually retried that time. See, I just had to increase the odds. Oh, and then it actually failed because it actually never succeeded. That's awesome because <laughs> the odds are too hard now. Um, but you can see it, it. It initially writes a warning that says, "Hey, I'm retrying this error. You know, I'm going to retry it because you've asked me to." Um, and then it'll, if it eventually can't do it, it'll actually publish the fault. So if all the retry attempts fail, it'll publish the fault, which it looks like it ended up doing. So now we probably won't get one to pass because it only has a 10% chance of having a correct customer order number, but that's okay. So 
But you can see how the faults are published and it posts those out in the broker. We probably got a nice error queue full of messages now. We go back to the queues and look at fulfill order error. We got a new error in there because we finally created one. So that's kind of the basics of error handling. That's how to handle an error in a state machine. Um, just kind of reviewed how the routing slip faulted is used to generate a subscription message back to the state machine because when a routing slip faults, it doesn't fault. So because it's meant to be a distributed transaction, the whole routing slip successes or fa is successful or a failure depending upon all of the activities. And that's why the compensations exist. So, um, and those faults are published whether you're whether you're listening for them or not, if you don't have any queues bound to them, they just disappear. At least with RabbitMQ, they disappear. With topics, they generally disappear as well. Um, and we always write it to the error queue. It is possible to skip that. So let's say we were being really useful in capturing faults ourselves. Um, I'll go ahead and show this. This is kind of a new feature. Um, but if I go into the fulfill order consumer, let's say I don't want those in the error queue. So I'm going to first, I'm going to fix my fulfill order consumer. So this, this random nonsense just goes away because that's kind of silly. Um, but if I get an actual, um, I'm going to ignore that invalid exception still, but if I want to just discard it. Let's say I'm, re I'm capturing the fault and I'm keeping track of that in my state machine and I don't want the error queue to fill up with those faulted messages because I know how to reproduce the fulfill order command. I can come in here and I can say endpoint configurator dot discard faulted messages. This is fairly new. You got to be on like 623 or 624. I'm not sure which one. But what this will do is it will actually let you reconfigure the receive pipeline so that error mess messages that are faulted are just thrown away. They just disappear. So they will no longer go to the error queue. So to show that, let's go out here. Let's go stop our service. Let's go out to RabbitMQ to the fulfill order error queue. We're going to purge all the messages in that queue. So now if we look at fulfill order, fulfill order error, no messages. In fact, I'm even going to delete this queue. I want it to go away. I don't want it on my broker at all. I go back to queues, no fulfill order error queue. Now if I go back here, I can see I put the discard faulted messages. I'm going to run my service. Still no fulfill order queue. Still, order, still no fulfill order error queue. Um, now I'm going to go and I'm going to create New quid. Go back to my order UI. I'm going to create my order. This I'm going to put invalid so it fails. I'm going to approve the order. And you can see it failed right away. But what you don't see this time is it actually creating the error queue and moving the error. Because the error queue does not exist and it did not write it to the error queue because I told it to discard messages with errors. So that's fairly new that you can configure the receive pipeline. You can do the same thing with dead letter queues. You can actually tell it to just discard skipped messages. I don't recommend that because, and honestly, I don't re recommend either one of these, but they were asked for enough that I made it easy so that you could just say it. Like, it's like I'm observing faults. I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to just discard the error queue because I don't like it filling up. So that's now available. So that's kind of what I wanted to cover tonight. I know it's been like a week since I did a video. I hope to get a couple more out in the next couple of days just to kind of get the a few more things off the list. I wanted, you know, I knocked out like 12 videos in five days. So I wanted to give everybody an opportunity to catch up. But uh, so this kind of covers faults, how faults work, how faults are observed, how they can be observed as consumers or state machines. If I wanted to just create a consumer that captured these errors, I could just come in here and add class and I could just say like this well, let's just call this my fault consumer and I want to I can consume these just like anything else I could say fault of fulfill order and I could capture that and I could do something with it I could write it to a I could write it to a 
a log system. I could I could write it out to Elasticsearch for finding it and doing searching, um, whatever I wanted to do. It's it's the same as any others. And now that I've created a consumer on that, that'll get a copy of it as well. So uh, if I do go out and look at App Insights, because you know I love this so much. You can see the, there's the failing requests. Any of the failing requests? I kind of thought it wrote log messages out here too, but maybe I didn't configure the logger for this one. But you can see the fault here that was published. You know, I called patch, I called order accepted, the order state sent the fulfill order. The fulfill order was received, the consumer was processed it, then it sent the fault message. The state machine received the fault, loaded the saga, and actually transitioned from that accepted defaulted state. So I'm still able to see that complete workflow. Faults are published with all of the header information so they know who initiated them, where they came from, what caused it. So you get that same traceability. It'd be nice if I could show it in a different color, but at least it shows fault nice early in the message contract. So. So that will show that and you can see that contract there so yeah so that's that's false that's how they work hopefully this has been helpful there is documentation on the site that discusses some of the exceptions how to handle the retries how to do the middleware handling of them with the message retry filters i think i'm sorry i'm going to blur you with the scroll here but i think i put the configuration for the error pipe and dead letter pipe on the bottom of the exceptions page so like discard faulted messages or you could create your own. You could write your own filters and write your own code to do stuff with these pipes. I mean, it's just showing you what's done by default. Um, don't be that guy that goes out and configures the defaults because you think it's cool to be explicit. Let Just let Mass Transit do the defaults for you. Don't overwrite them because if I change it later, you're gonna be like, why doesn't this work? So don't be overly explicit. Just if it's default behavior is great, just leave it that way. Um, same thing with discard skipped for the dead letters. I do believe you use Azure Service Bus. There's a extension to tell it to use the Azure Service Bus dead letter queue instead of its own skipped queue. So I think there's an extension method there for doing that as well to, to throw it into the Azure Service Bus dead letter queue. So that's all I got for tonight. Um, hope this has been good and informative. Uh, stay tuned. There'll be more to come. And uh, thanks for joining.